IT director, MOA. Cool. Eleven something. Peterson assembly. Valley Grade Dancing. Did you train assembly? Non metal tight assembly. Okay, um, do you have a floor? Where is it? Do you have a floor? <laughs> In the dark. Did you, did you introduce yourself? Not yet. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Zig Burgess with Zico Consultants. Right. Mike Chapman Control Audit. Robert Johnson, Okay, thank you. Zig, you have the floor. Madam Chair, thank you very much, members of the Assembly. Thank you for giving me time to talk to you this month. Uh, so, here to present the, uh, the monthly report. Um, so basically, we're going to talk about a little bit about the activity of the project, uh, how the project is being uh, governed, uh, a little bit about project staffing. And we will continue our running cost schedule. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, project costs, and uh, we will again uh, add two two new pro critical project success, success factors for you, and then uh, close out with the outlook uh, this time. So the project. Uh, activity perspective, I think the good news is that the realization phase has started. Can you pause for one more? Sure. Please? Boris, are you on the phone? Boris? Oh, yeah, yes, he is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. So that's the good news. Um, the uh, the detailed plan has been completed, the master plan. Uh, I'm missing a zero up there. It's supposed to be 12,000 line items, so it's, it's quite uh, detailed. I have not seen it yet. Uh, but I will, will be looking at it over the weekend. Uh, but it's a good thing that they have actually completed that master plan that is going to be the baseline. And, you know, the team is telling me they're going to use that diligently uh, over the next few months as we go forward, which is, a, which is good news. That's, that's a good thing. Um, the staff loading has also been completed, as I've been told. So that is also a good thing. Because as you probably know, uh, you know, there's... We have continually said that there's been past failures of the of the muni providing resources, and uh, we certainly don't want to repeat that mistake. So it's it's important that we pay attention to uh, the staff loading, especially from a muni uh, staffing perspective. Um, so the uh, progress of reporting, as far as the project's concerned, uh, you know that is yet to be defined. So we're very curious and interested in how they're going to actually pull together and summarize the information and how they're going to report their progress. Okay, can you pause for a moment? For the record, I'd like to recommend that uh, something with the gun bar and the Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Please continue. Uh, there are some critical staffing needs that the project has. They have yet to be filled and that needs to be filled. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and I think uh, last uh, time uh, yeah, there was a presentation by the SA. SAPQA group and they made their presentation so you had that report uh, and that was actually good news as well in the sense that it was talking about some improvements uh, that had made that had occurred from the prior QA report so I, I have a question before we go on and all of them probably and or or, uh, or Zell. but didn't we just approve some positions from the September sort of budget revision document because I'm looking at the critical staff from an IT the IT Yes, but they were not related to SAP. They weren't. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Please continue. Sure. So uh, the uh, PMO uh, group meets on a weekly basis, uh, and so um, I do think that it's important to recognize that the realization started. They're in their first week, and we've already got some non-green results. Um, so uh, there, there was a concern, and I think this has been resolved now, hasn't it, Alton? That the PMO, uh, the um, the documents as far as initiation have been approved now? We have uh, six documents. Three have been assigned by my mayor and myself. We have two that I actually have right here that we hope we can be signed, and one more that uh, we have uh, probably a week's worth of work on. But those six governance documents we're, we're trying to finish up. Excellent. So um, anyway, so the, the, the overall PMO team is basically saying they're a little yellow because of, of those, uh, those uh, items. Um, the HCM team, yes sir. Can you close a moment, Mr. Levinson? Um, I don't know the acronyms. Oh, okay. We'll go through those. Project Management okay. Office. Okay. Project Management Office, that's a, a group of all of the project managers meeting on a weekly basis uh, to discuss their, their progress and their status. Okay? Basically the leaders of the, of the program. HCM is an SAP term, that is the uh, human, uh, human resources uh, portion of the Capital project. Management. Okay. And Kaba is the name of, uh, of the software vendor that is providing time clocks. 
And if you see something called FILO, that's finance and logistics. That's your accounting stuff. Yes, sir. Mr. Training. What's the worry with the company that have a contract? We're still in negotiations with them, but they, but uh, you know, I started a long time ago, and some of these things tend to drag on a little bit. So uh, the the HCM team is wanting the contract to be done because we have to go through the assembly, and that takes several weeks. There's a 14 week schedule from the moment that they're able the contract gets signed until their work is done, and the HCM team needs that work to be done in order for them to begin their testing. So they have put it in yellow at this point because. It's not like we need it today, but they're, they're looking forward over the next three months when all that work has to be done. And the longer that that contract doesn't get done, there's a better chance that when they actually need the software to test at the very end, it won't be ready. So they have put that as yellow saying, we, we need to get that contract finished. And that contract is in negotiations between purchasing and Kava as we speak. If you, if you recall, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. With the contract, it's got to come to the assembly. Keep in mind, we have, do have concerns about the time keeping the system. So just let us know yeah, it, exactly I, what it entails. I want the software, I want the hardware. We're shooting for the 24th, I believe, of May is when this one, we need this one to hit the assembly. So uh, 50, is the 50, date by which we have to have it approved by the assembly? 24th. Okay, so you want to approve the date to it. 53 clocks for our, from a hardware perspective. Now are we gonna sell back the old clocks we had? The old clocks, uh, that would be for IT to, to, to work with Kronos. I doubt that there will be the availability of selling those clocks back to Do you have a comment you want to make that? And that is that yeah. I've got two comments. One is I'll find out about the selling back because uh, I'll find out and get back to you on that. We still need them for another year and a half, by the way. So yeah. we can't but after we're done. Well, we're assembly, we were not very happy when they were bought to begin with. So. Okay, fair enough. Whole other story. Fair enough. Anything else you can say? No. Thank you, Mr. Train. Do you have a question? Uh, Barbara. Um, given Mr. Trainee's comment, Adam Chair, would you like a work session a Friday before the assembly meeting that you're to approve the Kava contract so you can get more information? Thank on you. That? I absolutely. Okay. I, I do have one question. Mr. Um, when you say clocks, are you talking about something else? So there, there's, a, there's a Kronos clock by the elevators as you get here, but it's, a, it's actually a piece of hardware that gets affixed to the wall. People come with their, their cards, they flap it in front of there, it, it records their in and out punches. It is an actual piece of hardware affixed to the wall. Anything else, Mr. Dunlop? Thank you, Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Train. Of course, we've had a whole discussion on the whole concept of timekeeping. And for many of our employees, it's a meeting. Uh, the way it was working, the old one was working. If you were a couple minutes late, you get a letter from HR saying, why were you delayed? So we just want to make sure it's done. And with this one, I want to be able to sign my other computer versus trying to get down to a box somewhere. Like, just right the clerk. Well, I believe we'll, we'll, be, able, we'll, be, we'll be able to answer all, we have all your questions will be able to be answered. We have, web, you know be answered. We have yeah. web clocks, we have clocks, and we have IVR for people to call in as well. So all three of those functionalities will be available. But I think a work session, if it gets to that point, we're just we're back and forth now on finalizing price at this point, and then the memo uh, is being prepared. But we're sweet. It's yellow right now. We have to hit the 24th of May, or uh, it will not be ready. The system won't be ready for when we actually need to test the system in, in three months from now. Thank you, Mr. Durkin. The, the, re the reason why uh, this kind of thing comes up is, you know, you'll, you'll hear more about this as we go forward, and that's going to be the concept of critical path. You know, what is what is dependent on what? And in this particular case, the team is not going to be able to do their integration testing unless they have the Kava clocks in place and operating. Because you can't test, because SAP is replacing the payroll system. And so, it is, and so that's where you're going to capture your time. So that's why it's on the critical path. And it's good that they are recognizing this early rather than being surprised a few months down the road. Uh, and then the technical thread also reported red because there, there, there's some glitches in terms of access that they've run into and that's, that's causing some concern. But my understanding is that they are reacting to that and correcting it, okay? Uh, so, um, so there were some, you know, as far as the, uh, the QA report, I think you know, we need to recognize there were still a couple of red items in their QA report. Uh, one of them is all about data conversion, uh, you know, planning and you know, preparing for data conversion. 
And you'll see later we talk about the fact that one of the critical staff positions that are still missing is the data management lead, okay? Uh, and the other one was resolving reporting needs. There's a lot of consternation and concern right now as to do we know exactly how many reports we're gonna need, who's gonna develop them, uh, those kinds of things are happening right now, and that's the reason why that QA report said that that was red. So there's a risk there, okay? Um, we've already talked about the fact that the PMO re reported some, some issues. Uh, there was an item that came up about the CABA contract, but I'll also have concerns with regard to the open text contract. Open text is the enterprise content management solution. It's a third party solution sponsored by SAP. Um, and uh, that is the, the, the whole solution that's actually going to be tracking and capturing documents, okay? And if you'll recall that we had those conversations over the last few months about even whether or not we were gonna get it, whether or not we were gonna pay for it, and so all those things have been resolved, but now we've got some contract issues in terms of the pricing, and so there's actually been some discussion that we may not go with this particular vendor because of the, the pricing. Mr. Training. So the vendor is not SAP, it's a third party vendor. It's a third party vendor sponsored by SAP, in other words, they, their product is actually designed so that it works with SAP, and SAP puts it forward as the recommended solution. Now, does that mean SAP is gonna guarantee integration with this? Because SAP is gonna have different versions coming out, whether it be three or four months. I wanna make sure we're not gonna build something that SAP will leave as an orphan child. I'm, I'm sure they would never use the word guarantee, <laughs> but uh, but they do they, they do present that as their as their recommended solution and therefore you know as they change versions in theory anything any any or any particular product that they that they recommend is, is 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 going to follow along so most likely there would not be an issue or a concern with regard to connect, connectivity between that and open text between SAP and open text. That's a question I've asked. Yeah. Okay, before I go to Mr. Perry, I have a comment that I want to make for the new members. Just so you know, we're talking about a contract that's going to be pending, but we already appropriated the money for this contract, so it's not new money we're talking about. This is new contract. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I just wanted to say that Kava has the exact same uh, prime relationship that OpenTest does. So, as, as updates, and they have their plugin. So, as either one of those systems changes, they have to change to, to meet the other side of it as well. So both, what you, what you just spoke about open text, it happens the same way with copy as well. Thank you, Mr. Okay, the last item, uh, you know, that I think uh, we're, we have not seen this particular document, but we understand that there is a gap analysis that's being discussed and negotiated between SAP and uh, the Muni. Uh, apparently there's approximately 25 items on that on that list which are basically saying here's the blueprint, this is the document and design that everybody reviewed and approved, which we've all been through that, so it's sitting out there, and then here's the statement of work from SAP which has a listing of all the things that SAP will do, okay, and what they will not do. And so apparently there are some gaps. Apparently there's some differences that are being negotiated and discussed. The key I think we need to recognize is if the Muni accepts some of these gaps and says, oh yeah, yeah, you're right, we probably need to do that, okay, SAP, you need to do that, SAP will probably come back and say, we need to do a contract amendment and it'll be a change order to the contract. So many of those represent potential increases to the contract. Don't know how many, I haven't seen them. Just saying that's an exposure. Okay? Mr. Wilson? So we review the contract for the million dollar threshold that we're splitting. It's not related to the project. Well, no, the contract that, that we talked about are related to the But it's because it's a certain exclusive, certain 200,000. Mm -hmm. Well, it's 30,000. 30, they're saying over 30. 30. Anyway, yeah. Okay, please continue. So a little bit about project governance. Uh, the, the, the group has established another meeting, another, another team, if you will, that they refer to as the business process owner group. And this group now meets on a weekly basis. That's been established. Uh, it's a good thing. 
uh, the initial membership of the group is the Functional Steering Committee. So that's a confusing thing because the Functional Steering Committee folks are trying to figure out why are they in two similar meetings. I mean, that, that's some of the issue. But there, there is a difference. Uh, and the key, I think, on the, the BPO meeting is that it's all about the project issues. It's about the project issues that come up. They need to review and discuss those issues because they all potentially represent either decisions about policy, decisions about procedure, decisions about configuration, or they potentially could even end up being a change to the project, which takes us down the change order path. So it's very valuable, very meaningful. Uh, the representation, however, in our opinion, should be extended, okay? It's not the functional steering committee. It is the business process owners. And as we have said quite a few times over the last year, we need to extend our representation a little bit here, especially from the point of view that there are consuming organizations, organizations that are gonna be receiving the results of SAP, like for instance, paychecks, or like for instance, the, the ability to go in and make changes to people's personnel files, and, and worry about their benefits and their selections on benefits. Those are all things that, in essence, are gonna be consumer type situations. And there are several organizations that have not been represented that should be. And we're suggesting APD, AFD, Transportation, and the Port uh, would, should probably have representation on the BPO group. Okay? Project staffing. I alluded to this earlier, you know, there are some shortfalls right now in terms of team staffing. One of them is a data management team leader, and there's staff that goes with that, so there's nothing there. Uh, the other one is uh, we have an OCM manager, we don't have the staff, and then there's a, you know, continued concern about, you know, is IT going to be able to get the IT resources that are necessary to get moving forward? Uh, those IT resources are ones that have to be working on the areas that SAP will not be working on. Specifically, that's everything having to do with the legacy systems, with the environment that exists today. If you need to get information from there when you're bringing data over to the new system, or when you are saying these transactions have to provide information to the new system, that has to be developed, and IT needs to be able to do and so that's the staffing plan calls for it. Staffing plan says we need X amount of people. Now all we gotta do is get them. What's, what's, what, what, what is that X amount? I'm sorry? How, how many? Uh, the, the, the round number that I recall is seven from the plan. And I was just reminded that we've got some more acronyms here. OC was Organization Change Management. I apologize. Anything else? Well, is that already in the budget? There, there was a budget line item that was identified as part of this overall project, uh, which was for backfilling and providing resources where there was a shortfall. Um, so, and then that, I think that was a $4 million number. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the last item on there, I think we need to recognize that we have some project knowledge in five people that are with Alaska IT. And that contract ends Friday. Is that right? Well, contract doesn't end, but the money is a little bit there's a, but yeah. So, there's so, so you, we're going to be losing some some folks that are local, uh, but the contract is over and they're going to be leaving uh, the project. And I don't know how they're going to be filling those roles. So, I've got two comments on this particular one. One of these folks is a lead that is now beginning May 2nd, will be joining as part of that budget of seven resources, will be joining the MOAIT team. So we're not gonna lose that knowledge. And that person is going to play a key role as he has been about what Ziga just talked about, which is this data interchange from our third party systems in, which is what we're calling interfaces. That person led the whole interface bit so far to date. MOA IT is bringing him on to lead that work for the MOA, so we're not going to lose that knowledge. Um, the budget question is a sensitive one. Yes, money has been put aside, 
but it's been put aside effectively at $75 an hour, so we have to be careful about how we backfill. While on paper, the number of hours might be seven man, seven FTEs, full-time equivalents in terms of effort expected, the budget doesn't necessarily map exactly to that in terms of dollar by dollar. So we've got to be managing that, but that's where we are. Thank you. Always good to get an update. Okay, the running costs are just put. This is just a continuation of what uh, what we present to you on a weekly basis. It's just a, the actual weekly run rate. Uh, and so, uh, you know, just to let you know how, how money is being spent and about how much is being spent on a weekly basis for contractor uh, charges, including their expenses. So we continue to run in the $300,000 range every week. So anytime you want to sit there and figure out you know, orders of magnitude, where you're going to end up a year from now, that, that will help you. I thought the other thing we've added down at the bottom is, you know, what's the count of the number of contractors by team? So what you see down there is there are eight people in the PMO with a management team. There are 10 on Philo, which is the financial portion of the SAP project. HCM has 11. Now this is as of last week. Um, the integration team has six, fitting everything together, very technical, if you will. The development team has a leader team. That's the one. Most of the rest of that is going to be coming down the road as, as, we, as we get into actual development work. We'll be adding resources there. And then the data team, again, there's one person working there. It's officially part of the data team, but there's quite a few more positions that need to be filled in that one. And the OCM team, Organization Change Management, uh, the project manager is there, but no staff. Mr. Darren? My only comment on that is that includes the Alaska IT people that are rolling off, so those numbers will be lower next, next week. week. But I think we don't have 11 HCM people <laughs> uh, left and, and so forth, so uh, I think there were three, well, I don't know, two, at least two or three in that number. So I'm just saying those numbers reflect some of the staff that are rolling off. Yeah, that's as of last week. Thank you, Mr. Darren, with your training. As we roll off the last night, we shouldn't have to pay the cost of the hotel or the department. They were, they were local anyway. They, they were local, local anyways. But there was no travel ever for any last night. By the way, how much money, how much do we save on airline tickets? Remember, I asked we're you guys. The easy bids. We're, we're, we're doing, we are doing the easy bids portion of the uh, thing. But that gets us miles. I don't think we necessarily see. No, we're not seeing saying that. Just at some point in time, I want to see what the results was in going with that system versus the other way. But we, but assure us that, or assure you that every project member is signed up through Easy to, you know, to, to do it based upon your request. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Thank you, Mr. Train. Please continue. Okay, so project costs. I mean, I don't have the update uh, for the project costs. Um, so, so I'm waiting for those. I should get them next week. Uh, so I just wanted, but, but the point is, is this is the you know, orders of magnitude. This is basically where you're at. We just need to, we just need to update the numbers for the most recent month, which is last month. And I should have that for next week. And I'll include that in my weekly observations. Okay. Um, I also last month reported to you several anomalies that I saw in here. And that's what the circle, the circle, uh, those numbers. The main anomaly is the fact that we could not figure out why we're not getting charges from MOA. Okay, and so uh, my understanding is that that has been resolved. That there was some confusion about how MOA should be re reporting its time to this project. And that, that apparently has been resolved, uh, and now we are going to see you know, the information provided, and that we, sh we should see those numbers start climbing now and we start seeing MOA charges. Uh, to the project. We, uh, we're going to continue talking about critical success factors. You know, this is basically just a relisting of the critical success factors that uh, we started presenting to you in November, uh, trying to give you an idea how things are going with regard to the project and what it's doing in terms of those critical success factors. If you recall, we talked about the, the need for a change champion. Well, the grade is an A. Got a change champion. The mayor has stepped up. It's it's excellent. I think it's it's wonderful that the mayor is as involved and as visible with regard to the project. Um, we we harped on the whole business of you really need a systems integrator. 
Well, you've got one. <laughs> okay, I mean, you've got SAP out there with taking an awful lot of responsibility for this project, which is excellent. Um, you know, we, we talked about the fact that we were not getting very good communication activities going. The OCM, we ended up with a senior manager that was responsible for organization change management. They've set up a weekly uh, change leadership meeting. Uh, they're getting involved with the communications director of, uh, of, of the Muni. So that's, that's excellent. I mean, so that's, that's good news. Um, the, the, in December, we talked about avoid analysis paralysis. Don't open Pandora's box. Don't reopen the design. We were very nervous and very concerned about the fact that folks were coming up with all kinds of, gee, well, we forgot to do this. What about this? And, it was starting to drag out the whole business of trying to, to finish up the blueprint design, if you'll recall. Uh, so um, the fact that we've got the gap analysis activity going on with SAP would tell me that we still have some issues. Uh, that therefore, you know, kind of grading that as a C, that there are still some things that folks are trying to kind of figure out and trying to squeeze into the project before it gets locked down and everybody says no more changes, okay? Um, avoid repeating history. Okay. The Muni must, must work diligently to get those resources out, uh, assigned and allocated and use them on the project appropriately. Um, we've had two failures in the past now, um, and we certainly don't want to see that repeating itself again. We, so we really need to see a lot more, you know, when you look at the staffing plan, you sure don't want to see to be determined constantly. I mean, there's a lot of that in the plan. And so hopefully we can get, get through that and get around that and not repeat that, that particular mistake. Uh, don't cut your nose to spite your face. And there was a lot of carving up of the SAP uh, scope of work. There was a lot of let's, let's tie this down, let's tie this down, let's reduce our cost. Well, what's happening now? Got a statement of work sitting out here. We got the blueprint over here and there's gaps. So we really need to get that worked out, get that resolved. Uh, establish clear, precise uh, uh, project governance. We've struggled with you know, making sure there's an understanding of what everybody's roles, duties, and responsibilities are. The organization chart has, I think, fi been finalized this week. That's a good thing. You know, we need to get that f finished up. And then there are actually uh, you know, MOA resources, especially uh, utility resources that are specified in the organization chart, that's a good thing. But there are still places in the organization chart, specifically the IT side, you know, that are not identified. So they're still sitting there. So that's why it's not an A. Okay? Uh, maintain team continuity. You know, we already heard that there's, you know, an effort made to keep one of the Alaska IT folks in. That's project knowledge here, because that person has been around, ooh, what, six, eight months? Something you, like that? You would know better. Yeah, I mean, so so it's important that you hang on to some of those people. This particular individual is very involved with an awful lot of the infrastructure associated with the project, okay? Uh, so it was that was a good thing. Um, so that's why we're, we're glad to see that that's going on. Minimize software modifications, that's, that is in good shape. Managed by milestones last month, we, we uh, spent time talking to you about some suggested milestones. We think it's important for the assembly to be aware of what the major milestones are in the project and to then ask for results according to those milestones. If you do that, that basically forces the team to manage by those milestones. We're not there yet, okay? Um, plan for post-go live, it's really hard for everybody to to look at uh, 2017 and say, oh, gee, we need to be planning for it. But the point is, is you've got budget coming up. And if you're going to sit there and say, I need to have some support personnel for this project after you go live, probably ought to be budgeted for it. So I think you need to, you need to think about that, when, even though it is 14 months out. And I would anticipate that the administration will go from their budget Yeah, you, you should have certainly asked about it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give them the opportunity. Okay, uh, critical success factor number 12. Uh, we're going to give you two new ones. Uh, 
uh, we think that you, we need to talk, want to talk to you a little bit about progress reporting to, to leadership. And I think the important word here is the word progress. We're not thinking that you need to hear about status, you need to hear about progress. So where are you? Um, one, one comment, this training really likes your graphic. <laughs> I'm wondering who you yeah. hired to do your graphic. <laughs> So there are some best practices that we'd like to at least bring to your attention. Um, you need to have identify recognizable milestones with clearly defined results. As an example, finish philo testing. Milestone. Everybody understands that. Okay? Reporting progress against each milestone. So if, that, if you're sitting there saying, I've got this milestone and it's gonna take me two months to do that, the question is where are you in that, in that timeline? Not that you're 50% complete, no. Where are you? <laughs> Make sense? Uh, presenting calendar progress by milestone project thread. It's the calendar, I mean, you need to be aware of it. That if this is three months out, if, if you're in, after the first month, the question is, are you one-third complete after the first month? If you're only two weeks complete after the first month, you're already behind. That's what you need to be seeing. Uh, reporting actual spending against milestone or project budget, so the key here is you need to have, a, the team needs to be able to come up with budget numbers for each milestone, which is very easy to do. Okay, and then they report actually against that. Report issue closure success and open issue aging. You just need to know that, hey, I've got 23 issues and I closed 20 of them. Good, good for you. So again, on the milestone, management by the milestone issue, that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, I think, you know, because uh, those of us on this side of the room lack the um, technical expertise, good job. Um, to, to understand exactly all the specifics of the project, that approach makes a lot of sense to me. Where we identify the milestones, we have the goals, we can get reports on the progress. Um, so my question is, where, you, know, you mentioned that that needs to be done. Where are, are we going towards that? Because that would be very helpful to see. And, and that is my understanding. Okay, I mean, I've already had conversations with the, you know, program managers and, you know, and I, I know they've got this 12,000 on line item plan, but there are, there are, my understanding is there are groupings, if you will, of those tasks, and those groupings are for various key major milestones. I just haven't seen them, okay? Um, and I would presume that any good project manager is going to do that. Uh, and I think, and that's what I'm just trying to make sure we kind of keep push that so that you will ask the question. I mean, you need to ask the questions that, okay, where are the milestones? <laughs> and if you do ask the question, they're, they're gonna, presumably gonna give them, show them to you. Okay? okay. So, so where are the milestones? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just make a comment before you answer? Okay, thank you, Devin. But um, Dick and I and our project manager, Dick, had a meeting this morning. And as everybody knows, by now, the SEP review committee has been no longer exists. At our budget and finance committee, Mr. Third is going to give a presentation, and we're going to meet with Mr. Third just a heads up um, before the next budget and finance committee meeting <coughs> and outline what it is we'd like to see. And some of what we like to see are things that we're just talking about. So I would prefer for you not to get into it right now, but at every budget and finance committee, which is not a committee of the whole, we're going to have quite a bit more detail. On this project from Mr. Baker. That sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Please continue. Okay. And, and, uh, and I think I mentioned to you last month I actually had a page of suggested milestones. Yeah, actually, you know, some suggestions were there. Okay. Um, so, issue closure, success, and then open issue aging. Really think that you need to be aware of how long an issue has been hanging out there, okay? Because that tells you whether or not the project is, team is working the issues or they're just letting them sit, 
okay? And so it's important. If you sit there and say that issue's been out there over 30 days, I want to know what it is, and I want to know what you're doing about it, okay? Reporting change order activity. Certainly, the change order activity is all about additional money. Uh, you should be aware of any, any change order activity that's going to start impacting how much it's going to be spent. One version of the truth, I think it's great that there's a baseline plan, 12,000 items, all that kind of thing, great. We're going to report progress and activity against those items, wonderful. That should be the source of any reporting to you. One version of the truth. No restating. Okay? Uh, focus on detailed completions rather than partials. This goes all the way back to what we talked about in February of 2015. If you've got a list of, you use the example, if you've got a list of 75 reports, all you want to know is that out of that list of 75 reports, I finished two of them. I don't want to know that I'm halfway through on the first one. Way too detailed. And use graphical display. You ought to be looking at bar charts and tables. So this was something we presented in the last month's report. You know, and the message was to say, okay, here is the first pass on a preliminary basis that the team made to create the bar chart to say, okay, these are the kind of the major threads of the project. Well, as you can see, I mean, you know, I was trying to show you, okay, one of them is six months long, another one is seven months long. Wow, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know you, you're, you're going to be waiting an awful long time to find out whether or not they finished it on time and on schedule. You got to break them up a little bit, okay? Getting into more like a month or something along those lines, especially when you're going to be getting reports on a monthly basis. You don't want to get have the project get out of whack and not have time to react. So the way baseline master plan should be addressing. The, uh, the, the next uh, one is project management presence. We want to talk to you about this. Uh, I found this quote, on, and I think this is kind of fun. Being a remote project manager is like being a project manager with blindfolds on, one arm tied behind your back while walking backwards up the stairs and not eating any glue. What is the message there? The message is you really shouldn't have your project managers working remote, and you are, okay? I'm not talking about all the staff, I'm talking about the management, people that are making this thing happen. So what are some of the common pro remote project management pitfalls? If you're remote, you're not connecting with customer project, project team members and their respective leadership. It just, it doesn't work real well to try to do that by phone. It just doesn't work. Okay, and we're talking about Muni folks here. Connecting to the Muni folks, talking to them, meeting with them. There will be communication oversights and mistakes because they're working on a phone or using, you know, technology or whatever the case may be, Skype. There's not enough communication with the customer personnel, customer being MOA here. Uh, there are often technology hiccups regarding access. And I just told you that right now there's some access issues. But as soon as you have access issues, somebody remote and working in uh, Washington, D.C. is going to have issues, going to have problems. Time zone differences do create issues. I mean, you, you've got some folks that are on the East Coast, that's four hours. Um, inadequate visibility into project action, particularly customer activity. So what is, what is the project situation right now? The only two PMO members of the Muni are, and, and, and the uh, SAP program manager, those are the only three people from a management perspective that are here every week. Okay? The remainder of the project management office is scheduled with overlapping on-site schedules. So the other program manager, the peer to the SAP program manager, who, who is representing me in MOA, he appears to be operating on a two week on, two week off schedule. Okay? This is the person who's supposed to be talking with the Muni, supposed to be organizing and, and trying to make sure that we get the Muni resources here. That's what he's supposed to do. I don't see how he does that if he's remote. 
Uh, the project managers of each of the projects, the project threads, that's the, the HCM, the, the human resources piece, the financial piece, the technology piece, the integration piece, future da the data piece, they're basically on a two weeks on, one week off schedule. So it looks like this. Mr. Evans? Yes, um, well, yeah, just in relation to this, I mean, it, it's the analysis that you're doing on that you're pointing out problems in the makeup of the system that could lead to problems with the performance. Um, you know, the first stuff you're talking about with the milestones and seeing the progress on up, you know, that's certainly what we want to see. This part about how it's organized and whether the project manager should or should not be on site uh, makes little difference to me if the first part's working out. I mean, if you're getting to your milestones and you're making the progress, you can be operating from the moon as far as I care. So I guess what I really want to know from whoever answers those questions um, is whether though them being remote is leading directly to any slowdowns or any problems or any lack of progress towards the milestones. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate you pointing out with the, you know, that if that could be causing a problem. I'd like to know whether it actually is, if that can be ascertained. That, that's not an easy one to answer. Um, but certainly, I can, I can say that from observation, the, the blueprint review and approval process dragged out. It dragged out. Clearly, it did. I mean, uh, and if it would have, again, we're talking, how do you prove a negative? But, but the point is, is if those PMs would have been here and would have been sitting there saying, OK, Susie or Billy, you know, we need your approval. We need you to. We need to walk through this with you. We need to sit down with you to do this. Would have kept that moving forward as opposed to, oh, I'm not here this week. Uh, I'll, we'll schedule a meeting with you next week to walk through that. So, is it the only reason why why things dragged out? No, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that it could have been done better and could have had, would have had a much better shot at maintaining that pace of getting that finished if they had all been here. Now, many of them were, um, don't get me wrong, many of them were, but it doesn't take a lot, I mean, you know. Okay, we're, we're getting short of time, yep. but Phil, I see your body language, would you like to talk? Yes, okay, um, I want to compliment Alden first of all, because I was part of these blueprint conversations and the hurting of the cats that he did and week in and week out, there was an excruciating amount of persu persuasion, if I use that word, to get the blueprint process moving. And from my point of view, it was not related to project management presence. It was just related to having the MOA resources make the time with everything else that was on their schedule at that finite time frame to dedicate the time to doing these thousand odd reviews. So <clears throat> on that one particular point, I think uh, I would concur with Mr. Evans that delivery is what we care about. And where it gets done, if it gets delivered, it gets delivered. If it's not getting delivered, it's the project management office's job to fix it, whether it be through on-site participation or remote access, however it is. We are in a technology society now where I do concur that <coughs> presence is not critical anymore. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Evans? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Training and then Mr. Brownback. Alden, what do you His biggest concern, how do you view that? Um, well, I agree with the result to, to a great extent. I, I, I have a believer it is easier if you're on site. I mean, th that is just the bottom line. You can have meetings, you can be able to do those kind of things. However, um, uh, you know, if used appropriately and available, uh, you know, I think work can be done. You have to remember here, however, that almost well, all of these people are consultants who have families. Uh, and we're unfortunately in the middle of nowhere in Alaska and we want the best people. And you have to be able to allow the people at some point to be able to go back and spend some time with their families. 
uh, for just a, the standard of living and, and so forth. So while the, the red there is vacation, the reality is is that the blue, they are working, they just happen to be working at home. And uh, to have people spend two weeks away from their family, the wife and their kids, uh, and not have an opportunity, we, I don't think we would get anybody, to, to be completely honest, other than myself, who, uh, who has been dogged to trying to deliver this. But it, it, is, it, we, it is better to have them on site, I, I, I will say that. However, we want the best people to be able to deliver this project, and you have to give them an opportunity to at least be um, uh, home. And Mr. Franco is here, uh, he's the project manager. He lives in Virginia. Annapolis, Maryland. Maryland. Washington, D.C. He is traveling every weekend from as far from Alaska to, to Maryland back every weekend in order to be able to be to do this. So uh, it is a quality. I mean, it's a quality of life. I mean, you you you've done these projects all over, and getting to Alaska is a, is a challenge as well. We just happen to be farther away uh, than than most. But um, I mean, several of these people probably wouldn't work on our project if we told them to be here every week. Is that correct? It is, and you have to remember, as long as the key program managers were here directing all of them and the head staff, that we are getting good quality work out of the people. And this is standard for implementations like this. But to to the point, um, you've got to stage the problem to make sure you have a little Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dunbar. Well, this has already been partially answered by the conversation we're having here, but just assuming arguendo that you're right in saying that this is a real problem that people are off-site. What, if anything, can we actually do about it? What sort of concrete steps can we take? So it sounds like we don't have the, the human resources here in the state to have people on the site. So it's something you would recommend we could actually do. Well, I, well, clearly, clearly, I think that you know, management people should be here. Okay? I mean, I don't disagree with anything that's been said about the rest of the team. I mean, we, you know. Talking about 35 people here, uh, and so for them, absolutely. Um, but uh, you know, I think the management people need to be here. I especially think that uh, you know John Marchinko needs to be here more than just two weeks out of, out of the month. Um, and uh, you know, the, the others, I mean, they're more of the two, three weeks on, one week off type of thing, uh, or two and one rather. But yeah, he's two and two. So he's gone for two weeks in a row, and he's the one that uh, needs to be paying attention to the MOA staffing. I continue to be extremely concerned about MOA staffing. I continue to be concerned about whether or not the MOA is going to fall into the same traps it fell into twice already. And we're going down, you know, we don't want to go down that same path. We want to learn from those mistakes. So, but can, but can the, uh, you know, to answer your question more directly, you know, don't, there aren't people around here that know SAP, you have to get it from the lower 48, clearly. And, and, and also, to answer the other part of your question, sir, is, is uh, you know, is there a dollar impact? There is a dollar impact. You know, your expenses are gonna go up if you start, because I think it's important that, you know, so for people to have a quality of life, I would sit there and say, hey, go home on the weekends. It's a haul, it's a haul, okay? He doesn't, okay? And he's able to work it out that he spends three nights a week at home. Okay, it, so it can be done. So does that mean you guys are going to have to approve a slight increase and make an exception to the travel policy? Absolutely, it does. Yeah, so that's that's my yes, it does. So that's what we can do. The assembly you want us to make except that's the answer. Right? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'm just noticing that Matt Johnson is to be determined all the way across the board. But What's he, up with that? He, he's an additional resource that SAP, uh, free of charge, has put towards the project to assist uh, Blaine Wilkes, who's a delivery executive. Uh, she was the PMO and promoted up. So he, he's an additional uh, person, and he comes up on an as-needed basis, uh, no charge to the municipality. But uh, since he's a he's one of the PMO delivery executives, I think we've provided all of that in particular. And I, and I, you know, I tried. I've tried to be very specific with the individuals I'm talking about. You know, there, there's a lot of more up there. I mean, there's, you know, there's a, quite a bit of, you know, executive level type folks where they don't really have to be here all the time. But the team leaders, I, I think they need to be here, especially change man, organization change management. I mean, you know, we're talking about 
working on change. I mean, that's con that's constant communications and contact with the rest of the community. Uh, I think that individual needs to be here. Yeah. Again, we're back to you know what kind of what kind of way can you work that out? I mean, it means you got to be willing to and say, okay, go home every weekend. Go home every weekend. Yeah. Be here, and you don't have to be here through five o'clock on Friday. Uh, catch that midnight flight. People do it. I think you do it, right? Catch that midnight flight. You get home and you, you're you're in, you're sleeping in your own bed on Friday night. What's your training? Well, then what's John's salary per year? John Marcinko? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about a per year basis, but for the entire length of his contract, it's seven hundred twenty thousand. Did I get your attention for us? What, how long do we have him for? One year. Okay. I, I believe it's, it'll work out to be, it'll be through the end of the project, so it's probably 15 months, I think, when all said and done. $720,000, 15 months? Yes, sir. Yeah. You got that contract? Yeah, you're probably the wrong one. <laughs> Please continue. Okay, so just just as a summary, uh, you know, the, out, the outlook is good. I mean, the realization is going forward. People are working on functional specs. That That's good news. Uh, project initiation deliverables, we just heard about that. ESC has already already signed off on most of them. That's a good thing. Staffing plan is out there. The functional steering committee meet has has heard the story of how many people they need to provide, when they need to provide them. Now all they have to do is fill the slots. Uh, you should expect a milestone budgeting reporting for each month in that budget and finance session that you have on the third week of every month. You should ask, you should ask for that and they should address the major milestone completions and the progress based on schedule and budget. It ought to be there, as well as the issue tracking and change tracking. And then uh, we really think that your, you know, your, your project managers with those various threads ought to be on site every week, including both of the program managers. I mean, if this gentleman can be here every week, so can John. Because he lives in the same area, right? He lives on the East Coast too. Oh, that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Sal, so I've got a milestone for you. I want to know exactly how many computers are going to need to go operational with this AP. I want to know their status, both software and hardware. What I don't want is somebody to need access to SAP and then not have the right system on their desk to get there. So I'll be asking you between now and when this yeah. ends, I want to make sure if Johnny turns on the computer and has access to the SAP. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Training. Mr. Redderton? I just want to think some of these pages they find confidential. It just means it's yours. I mean, it means I don't, I don't put it out anywhere. Yeah. But well, you're, you're, for us, you're, it's public information. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're yeah. fine. I mean, once, once I give it to you, I mean, it's, it's public information. So yeah. Correct. Thank you. But I don't, I don't, I don't issue anything. I, it goes to you, and then if you issue it, the police is fine. And I'm he can't, that he can't talk to the press about, you know, what he's doing. Yeah. I don't, I don't talk to the press. Period. Just like that. Yeah. Briefly, maybe.
those reports and I just missed it or we just No, you didn't miss it, but keep in mind that at every single committee meeting after um, a committee meeting, I gave a report on um, the SAP review committee and the issues of the Okay, Mr. Dunbar, Um, Ms. Gray Jackson, if you would like, the clerk's office can make a concerted effort at those committee meetings as a whole to make sure that the documents that are produced are distributed to all the members that aren't here. That would be great. Mr. Wellington, and then we're going to end this meeting. Yeah, sorry. Um, so if a milestone's not met or it's slipping or something, what, what do we do about it? No, I can't answer that question. It's a part of the project management. I mean, as we're going through that, we're... First off, there should be no surprises. We should, I mean, if we're working on a weekly basis, we should be able. Uh, SAP has the availability of additional resources. That this is a this is a, a contract where they have to meet a certain deliverable. If, if they're falling behind, one of the things that we would be doing before that milestone was needed, we might ask them, "Hey, you need to supply some additional resources." If it's a muni resource, those are discussions which, as we were all concerned about, we would have to take uh, take a look at and say. Hey, we are. We, we don't think we're going to meet our milestone because of this. What are our options? Going in a contractor, uh, all of those kind of things. So, I look at the milestones as you know goals out there. But if we're waiting for the last second before we're figuring out we're going to make them, we'll never make those particular things. But res th this is a resource-based project. It's all human capital for the mo most part that that is needed. And if we're falling behind, the the way to kit catch up is to allocate those resources on both sides of both the consultant and the meeting side to try to, to, to tackle whatever that milestone is.